Welcome to another episode of Season 2 of the Panjway Podcast. As always, you can find our episodes on all podcast platforms, as well as YouTube and Facebook for the video episodes. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button on your platform of choice, and if you enjoy what you hear, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a nice five-star review. If you want to support the podcast financially, we've set up a few ways for you to do so this season. You can become a patron by hopping over to patreon.com slash the Panjway podcast and sign up for a small monthly donation. If you want to make a one-time donation, you can find us on Venmo at the Panjway podcast. And last but not least, we've got a small selection of merchandise in our store. So if you head over to the Panjway podcast.com and click on the store tab, you'll see stickers and other merchandise and who knows what might come down the pipeline. So remember on all three pa- platforms, that's the Panjway podcast. P-A-N-J-W-A-I podcast. Thank you. Honestly, that's one of the reasons I keep my hair so long all the time. I just have, I've had PTSD from uh, getting hair. It's that bandana, dude. I yeah. get it, bro. <laughs> I, get I, it, I think dude. that's really why most, like, everyone likes make fun of the, the vets with beards. It's like, oh, they're trying to relive the glory days or pretend they're SF. No, no, no we are rebelling it. against years of oppression. Yeah, oh. dude, I hated shaving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every day. Fucking, like every single, and, and when you're in the field and they're like, use your coffee mug. I didn't drink coffee, but I'm like, what if I did? This is unsanitary, but fuck yeah. it. Okay. And then it's all, yeah. no, nah, I don't want to fucking shave. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And man. I like, look better with a beard. I'm ugly without all this shit, man. <laughs> no, that's all. Yeah, it's a fact. Yeah. That hides my, my second chin and my jaw. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my beard's all scraggly and like patchy and like, I don't, I don't really have a really great beard. But it's like when I think about shaving it off, man. I do it like once every two years. I'll I'll trim it's it all so down. So weird. It's like man, like I just can't do it because when I when I put that razor to my face, all I can see is like the the days on end of monotonous misery. Where I was just like, fuck, I hate my. Instead life. of seeing the rest of the house outside the mirror, everything outside the mirror is a barracks room. And yeah, <laughs> I can see like the, the beige you can and smell tan the white mold. of a barracks room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Three day old beer sitting. Okay, anyway. Anyways, we're gonna go and introduce our guest this time. <laughs> Dude, that was the best oh, We're gonna we'll introduce our, our the bearded gentleman who's joined us this evening. Yes. Uh the joining us today is Brent Buffington. Brent was in Alpha Company 123 Infantry, which for our more astute listeners, 123 Infantry should sound familiar because we were attached to 123 Infantry. While we were kicking it up in Spur Wangar, Brent was about ten clicks down the horn. Sucking yep. dick for beer money at Sean. <laughs> so every time you've heard us talk about how awesome our living conditions were Air and how we were glad we weren't living in GP mediums and tents, yeah. that's what Bushan's That's doing. what we were doing. Yeah, it was Bushan like a there. really, really shitty camping trip where people try to kill you for nine months. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was it's, awesome. it's a good thing you never came to Spurwangar. You would have been very upset. You would have been. Yeah, you've been like, yeah, I'm pretty right? sure we did, bro. Did, did you? We had, yeah, we had to come for like an escort. To bring people like further down. I mean, we didn't get to go explore and shit. Right. I just okay. So I do remember hitting Soja. Oh, it's way was, out there. Yeah, I don't know where the fuck that was, but that was the best chow I've ever had oh, in yeah. my life. Soja man. had great chow. Yeah. Yeah. Legendary chow. Yeah. I'm still convinced Soja only existed because we had a contract with like some the company KBR or something <laughs> to like keep the base open, and even though we had no strategic need for that base at all, we just had to keep it open. It was the biggest base full of nothing that I've ever been to. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was huge. It was so <laughs> empty. Like, you came in and there was just like so much room where we parked our trucks mm-hmm. and then like a chow hall. Like, that was it. Way the fuck And like over a there. trailer where they had like a talk. Yeah. It was like a talk. <laughs> like we came like, in. Two tents, like two tents, a defect, hey and like um, <laughs> HLZ for 300 helicopters. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> y'all got a shower before you come in here. I was like, yeah, fucking suck a dick, dude. <laughs> they had you, bro. <laughs> Oh man! Like oh, if yeah, I take you, these pants off, they're gonna stand up by themselves. Yeah, I'm not right. doing that shit. Just, you know, you have to put them in a corner. You know, they just stand right there on the floor. Dude. Yeah, for sure. But I remember uh, that night, man. We went there, ate. I think it's like stir fry. But dude, I haven't even heard of stir fry up until this point in my life, <laughs> and it's still the best goddamn stir fry I've ever had. It mm-hmm. is so good. But uh, yeah, soja. 
Yeah, but we did come to Spermagar. I mean, I forgot I was on some detail. Mm. It's very vague. Like, I remember going into a room, and I think there was a coffee pot there. I don't know. But I just have this vision, like, it's a bright-ass room with a coffee pot. And then we just turned around and left. It was a good time. <laughs> That's for the best. Because if yeah. you would wandered into our concrete-reinforced rooms with air, with air conditioning, conditioning and, you know, <laughs> oh, full-service dining facility and <laughs> i've been to machines masseuse whoa 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 we, now, we had I'll an MWR. What we did have man at by the well not in the beginning but by the end we had laundry services bro shut the fuck up dude mm-hmm. <laughs> dead yeah. serious man we on base like all we had to do is like put our dirty dirty stuff in like yeah, our and laundry I, bag and they walked it across it. hlz handed it to some civilians they washed their clothes yep. for us and folded it. some like little fit like some filipino dudes in there there's probably 10 or 15 of them in there and it's a big stack of laundry Laundry machines and dryers. You come back with your slip and pick up your stuff and it'd be washed and dried, man. <laughs> War so, as hell. I'm not trying to make it out like, <laughs> oh, it was so shitty at Mushan, but our shit broke. And uh, I got pulled out when we went through customs because I had five, 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 six rounds in mm-hmm. the leg pocket. Because usually, you know, like you would have a misfire, rack it back, and you would catch, you know, put it somewhere. And there's like five of them in there. And he's like, do you not wash your laundry? I'm like, no, nah, bub. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, they should start breaking down towards the end, dude. Oh, man. Like, I'm yeah, wearing the same you. underwear for like two <laughs> weeks now, dude. When they told us uh, Afghanistan, Mushan was exactly what I had yep. in mind. Then we went out there. I was like, okay, this is what I thought we'd be living like, you know. Yeah. Versus Sparrowgar, when we got there, I was like, hell yeah, man, this is nice. It was deluxe apartment in the sky. So. Yes. And we'll come back to Mushan, but I will share my initial, my, my very first impression of Mushan. Is we pulled in, we were just dropping something off. This was like July. And I remember seeing all of your like tents that you guys lived in, and the sides were all open. Mm-hmm. And you could see all the way down all the cots, and you could tell, and they had fans on each side just trying desperately to move air through the <laughs> yeah. tents. And I was like sitting in my <laughs> air conditioned mat be like, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well we had we had uh like AC units and shit. Uh-huh. For those bitches would go out all It'd the time, out. man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cause it would be a cool like seventy five in that tent. Once you go to take a nap, you AC wake up case. an hour later, it's like a buck thirty. Yeah. And you're just drenched. Like yeah. <laughs> I still loved it, dude. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Like, if I had some shit to compare it to, like, something that was, you know, a lot easier and, like, good living conditions. Mm-hmm. Like I, like you said, y'all heard y'all going to Afghanistan. This is what you pictured. So, mm-hmm. when you get off of the Chinook and this is what you see, you're like, well, shit, okay, boys. Yeah. yeah. This is it. Man. This is what I expected. Yeah, yeah Fuck, man. You know, didn't hurt my feelings. Right. So, I mean, it brought us all together, dude. Sure. Because yeah. we had a big push. Like you were saying, you got your unit, like, as they were getting off the bird or getting onto the bird, they're like, hey, we got one more. Get up there. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how it was, man. We had so many people coming in. Yeah. And we were doing, luckily, I got there right when they got back from NTC. So, I still got to do a lot of the field problems with on Lewis. So, mm-hmm. I still had, like, a little bit, you know. Like, I was making friends and showing them a little bit what I knew. <clears throat> Had like, the opportunity to get hazed properly before you went down range. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we'll circle back to that, dude. Old sorry, <laughs> ass. So we got us good, bro. Well, yeah. while we're on the top, we'll go ahead and uh, start with our normal intro. You've watched the show, so you kind of know oh, how yeah. this goes. So, so kind of give us a brief summary of why you ended up joining the Army, why you chose the infantry, and, uh, you know, kind of fill in the gaps between we were, what so, we were just talking about and how you ended up going to Panjway. I like it, dude. That was good. Good little circle back right there. So, um, podcast ninja. <laughs> always wanted to be in the military after 9-11. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I mm-hmm. wanted to do something. So, I went to uh, the Marines first and I was doing that pulley shit where you go in on the weekends and like do pull-ups oh, and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then get screamed at. And I was like, hell yeah, this is fun. And then I went to go sign. And they made fun of me because I had, or they asked me if I was in a gang. Because <laughs> I had no regrets tattooed on my arm. And uh-huh. This is before that fucking movie came out, by the way. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, nah, man, not in a gang. So uh, 
I went next door and it was army recruiter and I sat down. He knew my dad. Mm. Like I didn't know he knew my dad. He just saw my last name, asked me, you know, do you know Gary Perry? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I know your dad. So I was like, fuck yeah. I guess this is what I'm doing. He asked what I was looking in to do. I really wanted to do uh, something in the fire service. I was like, I want to be a fireman. That should be, you know, cool mm. within the military. And he kind of laughed at me. He's like, those positions, they're like they're far and few between. Yeah, man. like those are all civilians. you get into one of those, that's what you're doing for 20 years. Yeah, I was like, all right, cool, man. Then I want to be uh, an alone Bravo. Like I already knew I was either going to do this or that. So I did it. Went to Meps. Went to Benning. Got out. Got orders to go to uh, Fort Lewis, man. And even at this point, I had no idea how this shit worked. Like going into uh, to basic, I didn't know like I, nothing, and that's I right. think they need to work on that. But uh, I get to Lewis and spent like four or five days in processing, and I was supposed to go to one unit, and then they shot me straight over to one, two, three. Mm-hmm. And I remember, Common man, thread. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I was sitting inside the. Uh, into the battalion headquarters and there was like seven of us that we went through uh basic training together mm-hmm. and then some you know pfc comes and tries to punk us out but he's like an, in the s shops to <laughs> escort us to the companies <laughs> and uh dude i just remember getting in there and they separated us in this big ass room and then it's all the platoon sergeants all the pls you had like first sergeant rob <laughs> <laughs> you know? and uh captain smith in there and they were pretty much doing a draft because mm-hmm. they were growing hey what's your pt score and then yeah. somebody would answer <laughs> and then be like hey buff what's battle drill six and then like as i'm trying to answer you know at, at e7 my ceo's like hey buffton i'll turn around he would ask me something and then my first sergeant would ask me something so i'm like at attention Trying to answer my first oh, sergeant, I'm... like, dude, it, yeah. it was just a cluster. <laughs> but luckily, I got into second platoon, man. I wouldn't have traded that shit for the world. Mm. Those guys, the majority of them are my fucking brothers, you know? Yeah. I have two of them coming over next weekend, pretty psyched. But uh, <laughs> it was it was a squared away platoon, man. Like, I think... Like y'all said, y'all y'all could tell the demeanor of your leadership starting to kind of change, like when they started figuring out what the fuck was about to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got that. It was train, 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 and then it turned into y'all motherfuckers need to become one because mm-hmm. this little bickering and shit y'all are doing that's not gonna do well over there. It's gonna be y'all versus all them. So. We started doing like bowling night and stuff before we deployed. It was a good time, man. That's good. That's a yeah. good call. A little bit of a camaraderie there outside of work, which is important. Oh, yeah. It was a good time, man. Uh, I think one time we went to Hooters and we told uh, we told the lady it was Sergeant First Class Barrera's uh, birthday. So that was our platoon sergeant. So they made mm-hmm. him go and do the little chicken dance with the boobs and stuff. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he hates me for that, but it was worth <laughs> it. <laughs> you can't stay mad at somebody for that. <laughs> Dude, that shit was too funny, man. So you yeah, guys um, you come down there. You you deployed to Afghanistan. When? I guess around we the same left time we did. March 22nd. Was okay. when we left uh, Lewis, and uh, we went there, Alaska, to Manus, and then we mm-hmm. were at Manus for a little while doing the rollover training. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then we were at Afghanistan at CAF, I think the same amount of time, like three or four days. Yeah. And they hit a little bit more. You know that ID lane that's like right on the outside <laughs> the wire? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where they had dudes over there because they had Talibros trying to hop over. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking lit them up. But uh, they had us sitting there for like three days just trying. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, I think the next day we went and just sat there at the HLZ for like five hours. 
Yep. Waiting same. for these Chinooks. Yep. And uh, I'll never forget it, man, because I take off and all you see is like some dirt land, some shacks and like a couple of goats. And you're like, how the fuck have we been here for 15 years? You know, yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> and then, uh, so we land and then um, like as soon as the hatch drops, the guys that we're replacing just come running up. They're grabbing all our gear and just throwing it off, Thro- like <laughs> laughing at us. I, Good luck. You're going to need this. And like giving us all their tourniquets and shit. Like, we're oh, like, Jesus, oh, really? Fuck, dude. It's dark. <laughs> like, <laughs> you try to do like a laugh. Like, I'm not scared. Uh-huh. Yeah. But you know that meme with the kid off the Simpsons on the back of the uh, school bus? I'm in danger. Dude, that's yeah. how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, you had you had goddamn E sevens out there, like no bear, military bearing, like yes, yeah, y'all yeah. gonna die. Fuck you all. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure like they had all the good MREs. Like we had Ranger bars and peanut butter, and they're like, uh-huh. make it do. Fuck, dude, this shit sucked, man. <laughs> Good hand, uh, guys. Thanks. Appreciate nah, you. No, they did good. <laughs> yeah, man. appreciate it. But yeah, we get there, and it's just second platoon. Mm-hmm. So one of their platoons left, and uh, I remember they were like, "Go walk around the compound, go talk to people in the towers, and uh, we'll go from there. You know, come back here in about an hour, and then we'll figure out what we're doing tomorrow." So we're like, "Fuck yeah, let's go look in the towers." Like in the back of our minds, we're like. Fuck yeah, we're gonna go get a firefight day one. Yeah. <laughs> we get it like we go up there, they have no Mitches on. They're just like, Yeah, this is fucking stupid. And then uh they try to point out like some of the hot Final spots, you know. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just hey, if you see rocks going across the road, just be mindful. You don't know which way, especially like looking yep. over a wall. Mm-hmm. If you see rocks. You don't know if it's meant for the left or the right. So, you know, <laughs> unless you see two sets of rocks. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then you know if you you're look fucked. here and you see some down here, you're like, shit, just <laughs> yeah. keep walking down this way. But yeah. uh, they're trying to be cool. Yeah. That's good. Then uh, we went out on G Lock with them and they told us to pack like the bear, you know, bear essentials. So I wanted to be high speed and I wore the, uh, the combat t shirt. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's fucking it for like four days. Or not just two days inside of a striker. So mm-hmm. during the day, I was super hot. During the night, freezing my dick off. Mm-hmm. It was a good time, though. But Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember they'd be like, hey, you got guard. And I'll go out there like fucking splinter cell. I'm like completely <laughs> wide awake. Hey, do y'all hear this? <laughs> They're like, dude, just it doesn't even matter, man. Just, Meanwhile, uh, by the end, you got your crow on auto scam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You said it spins. <laughs> but they did teach me. They're like, hey, you want to uh, poke fun at these farmers? And I was like, yeah. And they would go and do the red laser and just start scanning it everywhere. So I felt bad. This dude's probably just like, I fucking hate this. You got seven ass <laughs> nagging wives at the house. You know what I'm saying? And then he sees a laser. He's like, fucking do it. He's up here trying to catch up with it. Right. But dude, oh. just end it. <laughs> you know, I, it was always interesting that we flew to the cops. And you guys did too. We flew to Sperling Gar, But when we picked up 138... We, I guess maybe we, because we were just eager beaver to get them to the cop. We drove all the way out to um, Calf, oh, yeah. and we drove that. them back in their strikers. Like oh. they, because they had they had the brand new strike, like brand 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 uh, new strikers, the, the double V holds and mm-hmm. shit. Okay. So they flew those in from JBLM, hmm. so they had to drive them back to Spurwangar because we didn't have spri- strikers at Spurwangar. So I'm sure they flew some of their platoons in, but we definitely drove a good, at least a platoon and a half worth of guys. We, the, the guys on our compound that we were um, ripping out with, they were already uh, striker units. They had the double VLs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it, 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 it was just like straight there. Y'all are leaving this. Mm-hmm. You know, some PLs about to go sign, you know, fucking like <laughs> $37 million worth of just shit. Sign the line, you know? <laughs> just sign the line, sir. You're going to lose it all. It's combat loss. Just accept it. <laughs> yeah. <I'd be> like, <laughs> That banger, like, literally, I know I'm skipping ahead, but it was, like, the first two or three months, we had 15 just catastrophic strikers. Mm-hmm. And, like, you're doing the math. That's that's, that's, that's lots of money. Because they're, why. what, $12, 15000000 million dollars a piece? Super expensive. Yeah. 
That's why it's called an insurgency. You yeah. know. Yep. Take out a fifteen million dollar striker with a with a, with a fifty dollar ID. Yeah. You know? <laughs> with a potato. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we we always got the impression that you guys felt that you could take the strikers just about anywhere, <laughs> and it seemed that Painway was intent on proving you wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, uh, have you have you ever been so far down to Cop Lion? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, all right, looking down from Cop Lion, so the, about northish, you had the riverbanks. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah, but it, they were all dry. It looked dry. They, it's a little soggy. We got stuck like a motherfucker there for like <laughs> 12 hours trying to undo that. Mm-hmm. Well, we got way above it because they're like, hey, high value target, second tune, go get him. So we're going like through the bazaar, like a solid 15 miles an hour. Guys, that's fast and a striker. Like we're coming, <laughs> motherfucker. And uh, yeah, we got stuck. Like, fuck it. Like, we got stuck here, and he was supposed to be here. Like, we were so close. Just within eyesight. Dude, I'm pretty sure, like, they just came in, because some people came up on a hilltop and just watched us. Like, yeah. they had barbecues. They had a pinata, like, making <laughs> fun of us. And then, uh... I mean, like, can you relate? Can you imagine if, like, the Russians were, like, taking over America, and they're like, we're going to go grab this militia leader, and they, like, get stuck in the mud, and, like, you're yeah. like... <laughs> Sucks, bro. Beers, watching them. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Watching them like try to drag themselves out with their yeah. LMTVs. Like, except if, except if we were cracking beers, the Russians would be shooting at us. So, yeah, it'd be the difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'd be shooting back, but we digress. But, uh, <laughs> we digress. <laughs> yeah, just so you guys got there. And, you know, you're ripping out and doing your rip patrols and stuff like that. But uh, when did you guys end up getting into some shit, man? Like, tell us about how you earned your CIB. Uh, the first time we left the compound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was yeah. it on your patrol? Yeah. Because nice. they came up and told us, like, they planned this shit, I think. So we came out of the compound and you go 150 meters down the road. Like, all right there is holy ground. You know, nobody's mm-hmm. going to fuck with you there. They're just trying to make money. You bang a left and go about 150 meters. Those people don't give a fuck about you or anybody else in that bazaar. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'm starting to vow and doing all that jazz. And we hit one, and uh, I forgot the dude that's ripping out. He comes up, he's like, hey, Buffington. Like, I have dirt right here where I've been digging with a K-bar. And he's like, do you think anything's here? It's like, I don't know, man, maybe aren't. And he just starts stepping. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess there's not. And he's like, get up, let's keep going. So, we're going... Slowly, uh, but surely, uh, I think at this time, my buddy Kyle Peters, he was the uh, Valen operator, man. And he's doing good, dude. And uh, it was like some E6, took off running. He's like, hey, boys, you ready to get your CIBs? And we're like, okay, guy. Yeah, man. And it was like not even two minutes after that, all hell breaks loose. Nice. There was uh, some guys like in a uh, middle of a field. They just had a mirror. They were like, all right, they're coming. You know, they would shine the reflection. Mm. <clears throat> and they set up. And, I mean, it was fun. I, I, like, took about two seconds to realize, holy shit, that's me getting this shot at, man. Yeah. yeah. That was, like, March. So, we got there March 22nd. I think that would be, it'd have been, like, beginning of April. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so, we just returned fire. <laughs> um strikers came led off with some 50 cal and the uh mark 19s to kind of settle everything and uh yeah that's pretty much all she wrote dude except it sounds uh, like the, some legit CIB. yeah yeah that's the, good CIB, the spotters man. um we shot up their little motorcycle things but yeah i mean don't fucking don't be a dick don't tell them we're coming <laughs> <laughs> like fuck dude I wouldn't do that shit over here bro yeah. I would oh absolutely I would yo snitch ass <laughs> <laughs> dude cause y'all got y'all's what up on like that shit was sketchy in a, was that the one where y'all were on a compound and shit no they, they we got our CIB compound. 
Yeah, they hit us from a compound. But ours yeah. was a good ours was a good two, was three a good weeks one. after we got there. Yeah. It was like April twenty fifth, I think. Mm-hmm. So it, it, was, it, it was meant because I rip patrols we didn't go very far because the people we ripped out with were interested they, in getting fights, I don't think. Oh dude, these guys, I felt like they wanted to watch if one of us get fucked up. They're like because after that, dude, mm-hmm. I was like, we're done. You know, we yeah. just got shot at. It was a nice, like, it was like a 10, 15 minute engagement. I was like, that's cool. good, dude. Let's go home. <laughs> and uh, they're like, all right, guys, refit. We're fucking pushing forward. And I was like, okay. Fuck yeah. <laughs> let's do it. So we kept pushing forward, man. Mm-hmm. And God, dude, it was such like EOD ended up coming out. And it was literally like a 10 hour patrol. And mm. we probably went less than a mile for yeah. people who that's you know. But yeah, it was it was stupid. But yeah, I mean, you're just you're dead by the time you get there, man. Carrying mm-hmm. all that weight because it's well, not. Well, you just got like, that adrenaline rush too, and you start running around and mm-hmm. picking heavy things up, and suddenly the firefight's over and the adrenaline drops, and now you're, you're like, oh, that was dumb. <laughs> I'm yeah, really like, tired does now. Does anybody have a Red Bull? Right, right, yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so you got you got yours pretty early on. Uh, like I said, ours was a little bit later, but the AOs were a little bit different. I feel like uh, deeper into the horn never really calmed down over the winter. Yeah. Um. Well, well talk to us about Mushan because we've talked a lot about the parts of the horn, and we've talked about Spurwangar a lot and Zangabad a little but just, just can you just talk about life at Mushan what it was like living there what your mission profiles were like I'm not even gonna talk shit about it man I fucking loved it like it was the living conditions was shitty like the food like cause there was some shit where the cooks were taking good shit and feeding us shit uh, that was like super undercooked so I got dysentery like my fucking first month and a half there. And uh but other than that, man, cause it was so fucking remote, you know? Right. Like every once in a while you would have a random that's air quotations drone around to see what the uniforms and shit look like. Mm-hmm. But again, nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. You do that and then like it was just cool, man, because there would be like nights. First time, be like, "Hey, let's do burgers." So it's mm-hmm. everybody, unless you're in, in the tower, like come down eating a burger real quick. Like we just became really, really close because it was such a small and vulnerable target. Like it had to be one of those times, um, to like put everything aside. I don't give a fuck where you're from. You know, you're my brother now. Let's do this. So there was times where I wish that we had more, you know, open access to major water. But I'll deal with some uh, some baby wipes. Right. But I, I would take the low quality of living versus the micromanaging that a lot of the larger bases with higher yeah. paint from. Yeah, and we were pretty fortunate at Spurwangar that even though we had pretty nice living conditions, we weren't we weren't really being micromanaged. We were still company level cops. We didn't really have to worry about that stuff either. So there's definitely an incentive to to being away from the flagpole. And it's hard to explain unless you've been there, man, because there's a lot of people that are like, oh fucking we had to wear PT belts and all this shit. They're like, why? <laughs> You're a fucking target, dude. But yeah, but like when you get on those big fall, and I I didn't understand it the first either because it was the same thing when I was at Spurwagar. We go to the cafe, like we getting yelled at for not wearing your PT belt. But like literally, the most dangerous thing that can happen to you on calf is you get run over by Matt V. Like that is way more dangerous on calf than it is for you to somehow get attacked by the Taliban. It's just not going to happen. It's like you have MPs out there and they have commanders just trying to prevent people from getting run over. Because that's so more dangerous got, that, than the enemy. That makes sense. On a larger, where you have more vehicles, you know, moving from here and there. Yeah. Where it's safe to do this. Or it's still get, stupid, but I, I understand it. <laughs> that's like there was a, uh, what was it, an NTC where that dude got ran over. And then mm-hmm. after that, 
It defeated, no sleeping under strikers yeah, and all that kind of stuff. It defeated the whole purpose of like light discipline because they were out yeah. there with goddamn uh, chem lights setting up like football fields <laughs> into a barrack, which mm-hmm. I understand, man. Or how about just don't push it all the time to where right. the stress of not sleeping, you know what I'm saying? Well, you, and you shouldn't be, people shouldn't be dying in training because they got run over by a striker they're sleeping under. Like, that shouldn't happen. That's not the time for us to lose soldiers. We shouldn't lose soldiers, period. But if we're going to lose them, it sure as shit shouldn't be because somebody wasn't paying attention and they ran over somebody over. Like, I don't know. No, uh, we're going down a pointless different, wormhole here. Different, <laughs> different <laughs> rabbit hole, yeah. There we go. Our anchor just came back, dude. He's like, right. hey, let's <laughs> back in, dude. We'll, but, we'll uh, save this one for a round table, a uh, live yeah. stream. That we'll is, yeah, that would be yeah. a solid. Yeah. So we might be able to get some answers, man. <laughs> no, there's no answers. It's all there, there's no answers to stupidity. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, uh, sure. So, I mean, what, but what was life like at Mushan? Was it, you know, did you guys have, was it like a dismounted patrol day and then a driving day and a QRF day? Did you guys, you know, were they able to find tent downtime for you guys? I mean, what was um, it like? So, yeah, downtime came, like, because we did it in cycles. So, it would be whatever platoon is not out. Cause we would have two platoons out at one time. Mm-hmm. It'd be full platoons. Cause we like what y'all told us. It's y'all were running like one one element one everywhere s- you went. Well, we were one squad. We only had we only run was one squad at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So we were running full platoons, but we were doing a uh, true weapon squad and a maneuvering element. So you would do that, get back, um, and then I think it would go. Patrols, get back, and then you would take over tower guard, and then the next day it was kind of chill. Right. Okay. You guys but, do QRF. Um, our uh, our a our HQ guys were kind of kind of sort QR. of QRF. Okay. If it, if it was gonna be like some legit, while you know something that could turn into something. Mm-hmm. Like say third platoon was going out, and they needed somebody like that, then we would hold back. But if it's just normal everyday operations, mm-hmm. you no know, two platoons going out, then uh, it, it was usually uh, HHQs. So mm-hmm. wasn't bad. There they were go. pretty much they would just come and play taxi a good bit, right? Because you you couldn't take the strikers everywhere, man. No, yeah, as y'all can see, dude, it's you need a smaller vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Now, did you guys have like any kind of responsibility to do, like admin runs, or did the HHC do that as well? Like, if you had like to mail. like go get mail from Zangabad or some shit, did that fall down to the platoons, or did that kind of get pushed we off went, on HHC as well? We went once a week to Zangabad to mm-hmm. refit the strikers, do the oil changes. And while we were there, we had picked that shit up. Okay. Mm. Which was awesome because I'd volunteer for that. That way, if I got a big box in, <laughs> it, wasn't right. getting, it was not going to get rat fucked before it got back to me. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, man. There's a colloquialism I haven't heard in a while. Rat <laughs> fucked. Yeah. Rat fuck. Yeah. Define the rat I, fuck, Luke. I feel like, well, the first time you hear the word rat fuck is when you're in basic training. And yep. you get the MREs. Yeah. And some MREs have M and M's and some had Skittles. Skittles, yeah. And they those were primo currency in basic mm-hmm. training. And so But it's all, it's also important to note that the the MREs that generally had the really good snacks didn't have shitty. great entrees. Yeah. And the good entrees had shitty snacks. So what you would do is you would pirate pieces of MREs from two or three different ones and then consolidate them into one. I don't want to say decent meal, but acceptable, right. con- uh, I guess acceptable material. The best willing possible to combination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that act is what one would call a rat fuck. Yeah. So when you rat fucked your MREs, you ended up uh, creating a lot of trash <laughs> and debris and, and you would screw your buddies over who would try to 
come around later and you'd be an open MRE that had the best parts picked out. So Yeah, they'd have like a, a veggie omelet with uh, oh, fuck a freaking <laughs> muffin top and uh, <laughs> nicotine gum and uh, spicy make, rice or something. And make, a note. <laughs> make a note for the next live stream, man. We got to talk about rat fucking MREs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, since, no, food, yeah. since food is the topic of the next live stream. Well, by the time this comes out, it'll been the topic six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, so if you extend the term rat fuck to non-food, it would be like when you get like care packages, mm-hmm. like you get all the good shit out of the care package before anybody else can get it. It's yeah. like, you know, the good candy or the Red Bulls or the whatever. Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. <laughs> I mean, no, not, not liquor. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever had liquor sent to them. Yeah, no, never. Definitely you know, not. I have to say, I was a good boy. I never drank a drop uh, while we were deployed. I didn't either. Not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the second time you were all like flying your Apaches and probably drinking cold beers in the evening on your, on your no, rest cycles. I was just... The Italians have booze in their MREs. We were with Italians for three weeks. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's in an Dude, MRE. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, do stockpile, bro. Yeah, I would. I would. I think I would have just holed up like ten or fifteen of those little shooters, and when you had your downtime, just go to town. But anyways. yeah, that and until like you do that, and the one night you do it is when like the base gets overrun. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> hey, we've had that conversation. You'd be better off to be fucked up so you can just lay waste. You know, you don't care. <laughs> your your inhibitions are gone. So you're like, should I find cover or should I should I shoot the two forty from my hip at a four hundred round chain? You know, Tell uh, me what what gave you the courage to get your Congressional Medal of Honor? <laughs> Sixteen packets of shan- <laughs> shandy from Italian MREs. Oh man, All right, so. So what was y'all's favorite MREs? Oh God! Little, little side all. quest, real quick. Side quest. <laughs> uh, tortellini, cheese tortellini for sure. As far as best entree, I gotta go with that. Yeah, I would say the cheese tortellini, but I hated them all with equitable fury. So, oh, dude, that is something ain't that bad, dude. You, you needed <laughs> to know how to. Uh, it said make U.S. Army in on the box that he took it out of, so he hated it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it was either. The uh, spaghetti with meat sauce. Oh, that's yeah, a that wasn't bad. And uh, what was the other one? The rib one. The rib one was okay. You you could make the rib one work, you know. Um, but yeah. the spaghetti with meat sauce wasn't bad. But I think the cheese tortellini was probably my favorite. The spaghetti with meat sauce one. The good thing about that one is that it had decent snacks. Yeah, it, it came with the. Uh, it came, the came with okay snacks. The. Uh, because every once in a while you would get the hot and uh, the hot Cheez Its. Cheez Its, yeah. 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 So I forgot about I'm gonna that. I'm going to give you a little secret. Crush those bangers up, right? Get your uh, spaghetti, put it in the uh, little heater packet. Mm-hmm. Get your cheese, put it in the heater packet. Heat all that bitch up. Mm-hmm. So undo it, do the cheese, get you one of those little Texas Pete hot uh, sauce things, squirt that in there, and then just top it off with. Uh, with the, the cheese, little, yeah, dude. I promise oh, you, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> like, I would the eat freaking cheese, shit. man, like the plastic cheese that you could just like ooze out of the. End oh yeah, of the you, you're, you're the, not... the four year shelf stable. <laughs> yeah, <cheese. laughs> I just you're, I wouldn't eat it, man. I tell you how much. I, let me tell you how much. I, we're going down a rabbit hole here, but whatever. Fuck it. Let me tell you how much I hated MREs, dude. When we cleared the horn, <clears throat> which was a six day operation, I didn't eat anything. Until the third day, because all we have is MREs. Like I think I probably ate like peanut butter, you know, and that was it. But I like I was I was I was uh, so sick of eating those things after four years in the army that I uh, that I refused to eat them until the third day of of the operation. That was probably the first time you had to eat an MRE the entire time we were in Afghanistan. It doesn't matter, man. It's all comes <laughs> in the field, dude. All that time in the field. But I tell you, man, like in the third day after the end of that day. I freaking destroyed like two MREs, man. So it was worth it to hold off because it made them a lot more enjoyable whenever I did eat them. Right, right. But three days without food, I was, I was determined not to eat freaking. I, I mean, I had I had like you know some snacks and licky lick, chewies and whatnot, but probably Cliff Bar or two. But yeah, man. well, I know we had some good stuff in the trucks. We were throwing at you some sodas and some. Uh, we had those like uh, those honey bars. Right. And like the coffees or whatever. But well, that's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent 
transition there, Luke, to talk about your... the horn. Oh, yeah. Because I, if, I'm, if I, I'm going to make a bold assumption that for the most part, for the first month or so, you guys are, you know, doing your patrols, but it was all like company and platoon level stuff, right? Brent? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Um Terrible so I know we were we were part of that that operation to clear clear the horn. I mean it was it was it was a one two three operation. Um, were you guys the northernmost element when the horn was cleared? I believe that would have so. been the mission yeah. where Josh. Yeah, it was uh, like in between Mushan proper and um, Cop Lion. Yeah, is where we were finishing up. Yeah. So did you guys clear the whole time? Were you doing blocking positions? Like, what were you doing? It, it was kind of leapfrogging at that mm-hmm. point. Um, we would set, and then our uh, maneuvering element would push forward. They would get kind of set. And then we we were just trying to get weapon squad up as close as we could to whatever we're about to hit, and then mm-hmm. they would just take over and do So this. you guys were clearing then, basically, as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. Like this shit so, was fun. Yeah, that was a wild time. Did you guys end up did you take a lot of contact during that mission? We took a little bit. Um, not too bad. Small arms fires, you know, a couple of minutes here to try to bait you in to to move up and whatnot. <clears throat> and then uh that's when I was talking about the other night where we had the sapper guy hit the uh the baited IED. Right, and mm-hmm. that was the night. I think that was the, either the first or second night, and that kind of just set the tone. We're like, sure. "Fuck!" So I think that was that was the first amputation I saw mm-hmm. was him, and that shit didn't look good. No, mm-hmm. but he's still alive. Like he, fuck, dude, the will to live after seeing you know like receiving those injuries is unmatched, man. Mm-hmm. You said he was a triple amputee? No, nah, he was a double. Double. But it was so, because he didn't step on it. He took a knee on it. So it just, like, everything lower mm-hmm. was just gone. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm pretty sure his downstairs is there because he had his diaper. The legs and everything. Yeah, they they were gone mm-hmm. pretty quick. It's a miracle um, we survived, really, if they were gone that high up. Oh, yeah, we had him get hit on that one. We had another guy, uh, Private Clark, who had real bad TBI. He ended up getting uh, medevac, and we found out like the next day that that explosion saved his life because they had to go do a uh, CT scan of his brain and everything to see how bad the traumatic brain injury was, and they called it tumor. Really? Holy shit. Wow. So, you know. This man lost all this, but it saved made it to where life. this guy just saved his life. So yeah, wow. wow we tried man. to look at that kind of shit. Yeah, for sure. That's but, uh, uh, it's pretty remarkable, actually. <laughs> I would, it is what like if you're trying to look at the benefits of yes, we had this. You know, mm-hmm. it makes you feel better, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, sure. it uh. So that day ended. Um, we were pretty much. He got medevaced. We reconsolidated. Uh, first sergeant was on the way out. And this fool pulled out, like, from the compound on a goddamn gator. Mm-hmm. Like, in the middle of Panjway. It was like him, our main company medic. And I think that's it, like, on this gator. Like, this was some, like, you know, hit him up, shoot him up shit. Right. So they're coming down, man. They're like, trying to get everybody motivated because up to this point we just feel like invincible like right. everything we're doing we're doing well like we're getting in really good firefights the chatters coming over the comms that like oh they got two injured over here they're trying to medevac them so we would try to get a route to go and try to cut off med- like we were doing well mm-hmm. and um seeing him really kind of took the 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 wind out the cells for a while. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's the sapper, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, I met him like two days ago. 
that's still, you know, that, that's when your brother's down there in Panjoy. Yeah. Because. Yeah, it doesn't take long to make those bonds. Fuck, no, dude. Like, hours. But, yeah. uh, they got there, medevaced him, he's gone, and we pushed, and it was like, looking at it, it's, it's retarded where we stopped. It's a fucking open field. It looks like we were sitting there as a family about to watch some, like, 4th of July fireworks. <laughs> but whatever, dude. I'm pretty sure nobody was coming to fuck with us at this point. Mm-hmm. And, um, first time I was bringing us up, like, water, Gatorade, shit like that, trying to boost morale. And, uh, I remember the other sapper dudes, you know, he's hanging shit out as we're walking out and there was some Afghans, you know, trying to get some waters. And he was like, he, he lost his right. No, fuck. Like out there, like slapping their hands away and shit. And pretty sure they pulled him back to the rear. Mm. But after that, it was pretty chill. They, uh, found another IED that first Lawrence Gator was parked on top of. Jesus That's Christ, nice. like, and this one was meant had the crush bowl and everything. Like it was meant to take out a striker. Like, right, right. For some reason, if it would have brought that, like that would have been it. Mm-hmm. But uh, and that that was our we we used those gators for that mission, same one, and we used them for the next mission. And that was my constant like yeah. fear. Yeah, man. was that we were gonna drive over a IED with the gator and just like obliterate everything. It was going to. Yeah. Oh, dude, there, there'd be nothing like depending on how left. big it is, mm. even a 10 pounder that's yeah. meant for yeah. us to step on. Yeah. A 10 pound. You are. Fuck, dude. Yeah. yeah. Cause you got to think yeah. that that can, no, the con- concussion's coming up and then the compression after that, mm-hmm. you're done. So not yeah. to mention yeah. the, the strap. That did not stuff. happen. You know, he yeah, pulled thankfully. forward and we fucking bipped it right there. Hmm. And I remember everybody bedded down. And I will never forget the day that Josh got hit. It was on the 31st, man. We got tasked out to go do something with, we had the uh, strikers with the uh, main variant. So it was me, Staff Sergeant Kearney. Kyle Peters, Witzel, I think Henderson and Ford. So pretty much the web squad guys. We woke up balls early to go walk out there. And I think the conversation was like, hey, guys, y'all good? Like radios were a thing back then, but like that's the gist of what happened. Mm. They showed us some of the shits that they've been lighting up in the Red Desert. We walked back. Then we had another guy saying... Um, he was in the maneuvering element. So the day before he did, no, he he was fucking scooting. <laughs> and they came up and they were like, uh, we need somebody to, you know, swap out with them. And nobody would. And um, somebody was like, Buffington can. I was like, hey, dog, who's going to be digging this shit up? And then our uh, sniper uh, commander was like, I got it. <laughs> He's like, give me your knife, man. So I gave him my knife. Uh, probably forty-five minutes later, we're sitting in the compound we just took over, and uh, you just hear boom, and it's literally just to my left. I looked over, you see the smoke. They call over on the radios with the bottle, uh, the battle roster, and I knew exactly what happened. So, me, um, our fo heater. And the Valen operator Durham at the time just took off. So we're running. And uh, the easiest way to get there, because the villages were pretty relatively close, but there was a uh, grape rose. In, sorry, grape rose in between them. And um, we just took off on the top of the grape rose. And I remember Heater, I don't even know, like the FO had the Valen. I was like, what are you doing, bud? He's like, I got it. I was like, Cool, I don't want to touch that bitch right now. <laughs> um, hindsight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he leans down there, he hits it up, and it is uh, it's clear for about a foot. So everybody lands in his footsteps. I jump down, or he jumps down, Durham jumps down, I jump down, and then I think it was Sergeant Grego. He was uh, one of the company RTOs 
I see him. I turn around. I'm about to step into a ditch. And you just hear, boom. And I feel the smoke and everything and the fire hit behind me. It throws me in the ditch and I come up. I'm like, fuck, Grego, dude. I turn around. He stands up, gives me one of those. Points over here. An Afghan was trying to bypass us. And he jumped probably like three feet to the right. And uh, he was he was a double or triple. But, uh, yeah, that shit was rough, man. Like, uh, they, um, they were asking for our tourniquets to put on them. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Like, we still got, like, two more dates of this shit, bud. So I threw one over there, and, uh, we get him over there with, uh, Templeton. Templeton's working on, um, Josh Wetzelman. man. He, he got hit, and it was a solid double amputee uh one was below the knee one above the knee and the first thing this little sea sucker says man scares the shit like i felt like his mom i like I'll, I'll beat your ass you do this shit again he uh hit it and they were using the uh carbon rods mm-hmm. and um we come pick it up hit that banger did a front flip we come up man and uh the first thing he says is, do y'all see the badass front flip I did? <laughs> oh, dude, fuck. <laughs> like, you can see how, like, the smoke, you, without seeing your legs, you know something's going. I mean, of course, I couldn't even imagine the pain, but the smell. Mm-hmm. And I know all y'all, know, like, that smell is something mm-hmm. we will take to the grave. Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of leans up a little bit. Doc pushes him down. Hey, bro, you're good. You're good. And uh, he said, nah, man, I know my legs are gone. Don't worry. When I get home, I'm getting a badass wheelchair. <laughs> and we're sitting there like, do fucking what, bro? All right, whatever, man. So we're bandaging him up, bandaging him up. Haji is getting his shit done. Um, they call in the nine line. Me and who was it? Is me... Like two other dudes, I forgot the names right now, man. But um, we get sent to go clear the HLZ. HLZ is clear. We came back. We're getting ready to grab Skidco. You know, they're like, hey, pop, you know, whatever color smoke. So pop it. And <laughs> Templeton looks at the Afghan dudes. He goes, do not run until I talk to the flight medic. They give him a thumbs up. That bitch was hovering. I don't know, six inches off the ground, and they just hightail it. But they hit a hole <laughs> like three feet after taking off running, and they just eat shit. Like your homie's missing his legs. You know, it's whatever. So we get uh, Josh on there. As we're walking up, he says, hey, man, can you undo my right arm? Because uh, I believe it is whatever hand. You can correct me, Josh. His left hand or his right hand took real bad trap. No, like he mm-hmm. is kind of mangled a little bit. But whatever hand wasn't that bad. He asked if uh, we could undo it. So he got onto the bird with his arm and his fist in the air. He said, hey, man, this is how athletes get taken off the field. <laughs> like it from the beginning to the end. I was like, he was, you could tell he was doing it for us. Yeah. Because as we're coming up, man. Like, I know me, I was probably, like, fucking crying. I had boogers, like, popping and shit, like, because that that was my homie, dude. Yeah. He still is my homie, but, like, that was my guy, man. He's weapon squad, and, dude, he just took it like a fucking champ. Mm. That's what's up, man. I mean, I think that that fortitude and the kind of uh, the places that people go to in terms of the things they say and like what they're trying to do to help out their, their dudes, you know, it's like they're getting blown up, they're losing limbs, but then they're taking it upon themselves to try and alleviate the pressure of the situation on you guys. You know, we had similar yeah. experiences with, with guys that got blown up on our end too, man. Yeah. So that that's a, that's only, that's a unique spirit right there that can try to allow a little brevity into a situation that has so much, you know, inherent risk and danger and gravity. So, and not everyone up. responds with such dignity when yeah. they get hurt either. 
Yeah, and it's uh, it's very striking when you see someone when you almost become accustomed to someone behaving like Josh did or the way that uh, Clark did or Dennison, mm-hmm. and but then you see somebody else get hurt and react in a very different, very selfish way, and it's very jarring. Yeah, because it really should be the opposite. Like you just got fucked up. It's okay to be selfish. But yeah. <laughs> it almost becomes that's the uh, that's the oddity to be yeah. selfish, selfish and you know bitter or whatever. And it's just really, really powerful to me that the the guys that got hurt the worst, you know, these all these amputees and these guys, they just uh, they they just exhume such confidence. And they're like you said, they're doing it for everybody else. You know, Josh is doing that for you guys. He wasn't doing oh, it yeah. for himself. Yeah, he, sure, yeah. Man. He wasn't trying to look like a cool guy. He knew that he's gone. He's most likely gonna be okay and we still have six seven months here Mm. yeah well and i I had the privilege of reading josh's book uh which just came out and it was it was pretty interesting to me to read his perspective of being like one of the first guys back and then constantly hearing about what was going on back in the rear um the other guys were getting hurt and then unfortunately um you know navarro who, who who was killed um and could you tell us a little bit what happened to to Navarro? Yes. Uh, it was, um, we were about to go hit a, it was about a two or three day movement. It was kind of like the one that y'all came and helped us in the Red Desert. Mm-hmm. We were just trying to get that white space, get it, you know, as far back. And the first part is, I'm going to give you my opinion. We, uh, so we didn't have the peaches at the team time. We had the rave cam mm-hmm. and, um, we had to give the A and A a heads up because they were going to be out for so long. So right. remember that the next day after the brief, there was probably two, three, four, five hundred people at a time leaving villages because hmm. they were told to and they just went in there and just you know in place ieds everywhere yeah so hmm. that's the paint you know paint the picture that's what we're about to go into and um i remember captain smith kind of like pushed up like we're about to get the pages i think we're at the pages a week later mm-hmm. and that would have been a game changer because you can actually see like people trying to move up on you and whatnot. Right. Um, they shot that shit down. So we took <laughs> off. <laughs> so we do, you know, like a couple of briefs and then it's like fucking uh the day before we're out sitting bullshitting, you know, smoking a joke and they're like Buffington. And at this point I was either a digger or just a rifleman, man. But mostly mm-hmm. a digger. On what do you squad. mean by digger? Um, so like uh, Josh, say he found a pressure uh, pressure plate, he would mark it off with the head of the uh, Fallon, uh-huh. and I would start digging. Because what? We, yeah. <laughs> Why? Because we needed fucking signs to get EOD out there, man. Oh my god, man! I know, dude. Oh. <laughs> Did you do it the whole time, or did you guys eventually stop doing that? The whole time. Oh, my gosh. Once we got Rodney, that was mm-hmm. a fucking game yeah. changer. I don't know what he did, because I was in the back, like, finally, mm-hmm. and I was cool with it. We were living. I was fine. Yeah. All right, so, they're like, hey, Buff, man, uh, you're valing in tomorrow. Mm. And I was just like, all right, I'm not sleeping. Um, <laughs> and I remember, like... Everybody was supposed to go to bed at like six, seven o'clock at night. Just tried to get some sleep because we're stepping off at one. Right. You know, I didn't think I was coming home. So I wrote mm-hmm. this letter. I forgot who I gave it to. I think I gave it to my boy Kyle. And once we got back, I burnt it. But uh, me and Navarro went and sat out. Uh, we went and sat out in our little smoking and joking area. Everybody else is racked out. Um, and I'm just like, dude, this is like the first time. Like, I, I really think I'm gonna get fucked up tomorrow, man. 
you know, because we just saw all these people leaving. The only reason they're leaving is so mm-hmm. they can just go outfit and make this fucking mayhem. Um, so fast forward, it's about one o'clock in the morning. And we're starting to step off. We hit right outside the village, um, kind of halt. And we're trying to get eyes on. There's not too much move it. So we keep on moving in. And um, we go and uh, so me and Navarro push down and clear like different walls to where if we had to set up weapons, it was already pre-cleared. Right. And then me and him go in and we're hitting this compound. It's supposed to be an IED making facility. So it was me, him, and then um, some... A and A and uh go in and it's a crap shoot. There's nothing in there. It's kind of a waste of time because as you came into the compound, they had thousands of bricks laid up like in the middle of this corridor. Mm-hmm. So you had to walk it up to get yeah. down to get into all this shit. So we're walking out and uh the EOD guy was like, hey, man, everybody stop moving. He's like, hey, Buff, you already cleared down there? I was like, yeah, Roger. He's like, cool. B, uh, push weapon squad further uh, further down that wall. And he did. And when he came back, he stepped on the IED. And uh, it was a triple amp. He lost both his legs, left arm. And um, I saw it, like, in front of me. See him, smoke, concussion comes, it throws me back. Uh, that's where I tore my leg room the first time. I got bad TBI and shit. And when I came to, man, I was like, who the fuck just got hit? Like, it didn't hit me that that was beat, you know? Mm-hmm. That was your platoon sergeant? Yeah. Okay. Because he, he was so covered in uh in the moon dust, man. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't tell who he was. Mm-hmm. But uh, Sergeant Ray's on. He was in between me and Sergeant B, and he took a shitload of travel. So um, he's laid out. Me and Navarro start working on him, <laughs> and uh, he's like, "I can't breathe." He got the wind knocked out of him. Right. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I can't breathe." So Navarro's like, "I got you, bro." Rips out the MPA, no. <laughs> and he doesn't do the thing where you measure it and then cut right. it. Mm-hmm. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like. And then uh, straight into his nose, oof. dude. And, uh, yeah, that's right. I'm trying to put turn because I can see, like, just above his calf, there's a chunk probably missing about yay big. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to go as high as I can, putting on a tourniquet, and uh, like I just keep getting blood like everywhere, and I'm like, what in the fuck? Like he's not bleeding out his leg anymore, so. I kind of look in there and his downstairs mix up, buddy. I was like, dude, they don't teach this shit in CLS, man. Yeah. So Templeton's like, come and get gloves and a shitload of gauze. So I just sat there and started packing it. Like, that sounds weird about another man, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's doing well now. Good. That's good. But um, we all to get medivated. Or, uh, medivated. It was Kearney. Because he took really bad shrapnel to the face. He, um, of course, uh, Sergeant V, Sergeant Rezon, because of the leg. The female um, LT EOD guy, our lady, because she uh, blew both her eardrums in her ears. She couldn't hear anymore. She had blood and shit coming down her. So we get them off. And we come back, man, and uh, I remember they told us first sergeant was coming because at this point, this was a Moscow. Mm-hmm. Like, there's almost no leadership there, you know? Right. We had an LT, sorry, ILO. So we had like two NCOs and an LT for a uh, platoon. So we go hit up, um, Back into the uh, village that we know is clear. He comes and he tells me, hey, you're coming with me. And I was like, nah, like, I'm good for a sergeant. Like, no disrespect. I'm fine. 
and he tells Navarro the same thing, like, no, y'all are right there. Like, protocol, y'all got to come in. And Navarro was able to squeeze in that, um, you know, he, he's a corporal. He was like, because uh, he, he was waiting on his set or on his uh, five, but he was like, uh, I'm not going to say Weasel's way because he's a fucking hero. Like, mm-hmm. he just couldn't leave. And I didn't have that leverage. I was a god, you know, fucking PV dude, dude. So we go back, man. And uh, you and the first sergeant went back. Yeah, we ended up yeah. snagging up a uh, detainee. And I'm not going all the way on that dude because <laughs> shit yeah don't, but, don't say uh, anything about that <laughs> i mean the dude's alive today thanks <laughs> i think but uh like it was just weird man mm. like this like these girls have to know how evil her husband is and you can tell the looks on the soldier's face that he probably just accomplished what he wanted you know mm-hmm. and they're crying for him because like everybody there dude which is fucked. So we'll fast forward. I get to uh, Mushan. They call in another nine line. I go to uh, I go to calf. Get the full body workup. I have a little bit of uh, bleeding in my brain, and I have a mass. I have a tumor in my nipple that has to be cut out. Holy All shit! Right. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's awkward. So they fly me to. Uh, where was it? Uh, Qatar. But that was like three days before this. So after they do this, it's like hours. And all I want to do, I'm just like, can I please call my wife? Because I, I know how the army rolls, man. Mm-hmm. And this is what they told her. That we were dismounting from a striker. Um, I was involved with an IED incident. And they don't know how bad it is. Oh, Jesus Christ. Man. Like the last time that... She heard about this kind of shit is when Josh lost both his legs. Right. You know, like three months ago. So she's freaking the fuck out. I can't talk to her for, I think it was two days because of the brain bleed. They didn't want to aggravate anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember we were just sitting out there and it was me and Carney. That was my squad leader. And I'm just like, what the fuck happened, bud? Like, that. that's it. Whatever. And then uh, Baldness walks up. And we're like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he can't get the words out. He just says Navarro. And uh, we're like, how bad is he, man? Like, can we go see him in the hospital? He's like, he's gone, dude. So Navarro, uh, he sat back. He sat on a snapback IED. Hmm. Um, Didn't even know. And uh, <clears throat> Rutherford came through and wanted to, you know, bring us a little morale. Like, hey, guys, let's go get them. And it was the perfect disaster, man. It was, you know, 20 feet down the road. He probably had been solid, but that's where we stopped. And he sat on it. And uh, when he went to go stand up, pretty much cut him in half it threw him over a wall and one of his 40 mic mics went off mm. and that's what uh that's kind of what did him in right there yeah for sure but he was a uh he's a bad motherfucker dude hmm. damn i know when we were we heard about what happened to to navarro we i mean you, stories evolve it's the telephone game right um but surprisingly what we heard is exactly that was exactly that there wasn't any variation in that i was surprised that it um that that story had not taken on a life of its own but i think uh probably just out of respect to the guy that he was nobody felt the need to yeah don't embellish there's no no i mean nice no embellishment at all um it's exactly what we heard and uh, i know that that caused a lot of guys to put their their 40 millimeter belts in their bag or to mm-hmm. actually I know one guy he moved it from his waist up around his chest um not that I don't think that would have done 
any of a difference anyway, but yeah, I think if it's on there, man, like how many times where mortars is like, Hey, can you carry like three sixties? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, all it takes is one round hitting you in the backpack with those three sixties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're done. So like there's nothing left of you. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody it's mm. at that point, man, it is the luck of the draw. It mm-hmm. is. It yeah. is. If it's, your time i guess it's that's it i mean yeah. shit i would have picked a thousand different ways to go out than that but hmm. well i mean you bring, you bring up a really good point i mean very rarely was anybody killed because they were doing the wrong thing yeah or nobody was hurt because they were they were messed up or they were or or even because the taliban was necessarily good at anything you know, sometimes like, hey, even you know, even a blind magician is right. Sometimes, you know, it's like <laughs> you can't account. Both sides have luck, and both sides have good and bad luck. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, sometimes it's just your day, and you can't. I don't know. I, I feel like that kind of stuff causes a lot of guys to dive into a lot of guilt. Like, mm-hmm. well, it could have been me. It should have been me. I, you know, I should have still been out there, or he should have gone home, or it should have been somebody else, and. The reality of it is that was just the way it happened and nothing's going to change that. Nothing really could have. And that's, uh, I think it's hard for a lot of guys to, to process. I do. I'm still processing that shit, dude. Like it was my job. I was a valent operator and I missed it. It was the, uh, carbon rod IEDs, Mm -hmm. but it, it took, I mean, I, I can't, it I was much worse with the mindset, the survivor's guilt, sure than I am now. I realize war war is a war. It takes time, but uh, to, <clears throat> to to process that. Yeah, stuff but I'm I'm still dealing with the the after effect of you know the guilty conscience and shit like that. Yeah, but um, shit's wild, man. It is. Yeah, I mean. Because I heard, you know, like, you have all these Iraq vets who, uh, I'm not going to say didn't really do much, but their tours were like something off a of top gun, like playing volleyball and shit. Sure. And then going like, oh, another deployment, like thinking like that shit and then yeah. going to that. Dude, fuck, man. Well, I mean, and even to even to that regard, I mean, there were times in Iraq where it was literally any convoy at any time, and you're talking like not twenty pound IEDs, like five hundred thousand, two thousand pound IEDs, just literally vaporizing Bradleys, and like in Afghanistan, I mean, at the time that we were there, you know, Panjway was hot, Kandahar was hot, Kabul was safe. You know, there were parts of the country that had traditionally been really safe that were dangerous and vice versa. And it's uh, one thing we've kind of come across several times on this podcast is every deployment is different. Like, it's just, it varies so much. I mean, the guys that took over from us had a different fight in the horn than we did. We had a different fight from the guys before us, and it was different from the Canadians. And, I mean, shoot, we talked to a guy who ran operations in Panjway in, like, 2005. He's like, yeah, Panjway was great. It was like a safe zone. I'm like... <laughs> it just doesn't compute, man. Uh, Big, where it's popping, they're just gonna keep moving. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Build some white space. Mm-hmm. We'll build a you no know, five million dollar compound there. Right. Fight there for a couple of years. Because correct me if I'm wrong. There's nobody in Panjway right now, right? No Americans. Nope. Haven't how, been. How, haven't been Americans permanently in Panjway since 2014. How bad does that hurt, dude? Honestly, not at all for me. And I'll, I'll rationalize that yeah, in I'm that like- I I did the job that I was expected to do in Panjway from day one until the day that I left. And that's the only thing that I have any control over. Mm-hmm. So I don't have any control over what the American government did or chose not to do or the Canadians did or chose not to do or the Afghans did or chose not to do. It was, uh, I did my job and I, I was able to put that behind me and saying, you know, I don't have no regrets and I, it doesn't bother me what happens in pain. It's, it's unfortunate because I, I have a, 
I have empathy for the the people that live there and what they have to go through now. But, you know, we got as many guys as we possibly could home. And every guy that came back, as far as I'm concerned, was a miracle. So I'm happy. I'm, I'm glad we, I'm glad we were able to do what we did and did so without incurring more casualties. So, Mm -hmm. so the, uh, the earth pig patch, let's see. Yeah. There we go. Um, Sergeant B had made, you know, some for deployment. They're all multi-cam scheme. And he's going to wait till the end of deployment to get them to the boys. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I think we got him after, like, our second month. He's like, all right, I hope y'all have him on your show one day. He does have a distinct accent. But he's like, all right, dicks, I don't think we're all going to fucking make it. So uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do the patches tonight. <laughs> That's awesome. But... I was, I was proud. I was like, hell yeah, I got this patch, yeah. man. Hmm. I put that shit in, uh, in Navarro's coffin. You know, and, and like platoon and company level pride like that is something that I think that the army has failed at fostering. Yeah. Because whenever somebody comes up with something like a company patch or a platoon patch and they try to, you know, put it on their helmet or they throw it on their kid or something, like, take that shit off. And they, they just, they absolutely crush any kind of self generated morale. And I think mm-hmm. that's. Awful. I mean, how, oh, how proud of you are that patch? You know, oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it because it represents the guys that you fought with. I got a mug, like, mm-hmm. and it's just so simple, man. Mm-hmm. And it, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. another thing talking about morale. Like, I mean, don't go crazy with it, with like some boobs and shit. But right, something like that. Like, what what was y'all's platoon's name? Scrappers. Scrappers. <laughs> We didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of a uh, feel. We didn't really care too much for the name of our platoon, but the, the guys yeah. in it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you just said, I mean, even just a bullshit patch made mm-hmm. for this deployment, man, it's a game changer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I know for us because our our company was so small. I mean, we were maybe seventy guys on the ground because we were so spread so thin. So seventy guys at Sperlingar, like our our company pride as bayonets was mm-hmm. very strong. You know, we had we had a guy that uh, uh, Christian Cinino. He drew our own, you know, company logo. You know, spray painted all over. Like a lot of guys have a lot of pride in our company, uh, and it's just because that was basically the lowest level that we had pride in. Yeah. Um, everything above company level, other than one, two, three, who we really appreciated. Um, we didn't really have. We didn't feel a lot of connection to one six four. We definitely didn't like one uh, third ID very much. Um, <laughs> but Bayonet understand. Company. That was mm-hmm. that was that was the just locus. like with you and the Earth Pigs. That was our brotherhood. Yeah, for sure, man. Dude, not getting it, man, because it it's unreal. You you go to school, you know, grade school, middle school, high school, your whole life with some people. But uh, so deployment nine ten months, and then the leading up to it with all that training, those were the best friends I've ever had, man. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to explain. Like, I have really good friends now that I work with, but I can't explain to them about knowing that this dude, say, you know, I kick this door in, I get hit in the throat. Yeah, he's going to stop and step over me at first, take care of business, but he's going to get me out of there. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, I loved it, man. <laughs> well, and I know for me, you know, the, the friends that I have, especially, particularly from that deployment, you know, we're, I'm doing a podcast with one of them. I talk to them regularly, you know, for better or worse. In most cases, when you move on in life, you leave most of your friends behind. Mm-hmm. You, know, you move on to a new job or new career or a new city to live in and you make new friends and like maybe like one out of 10 you stay in touch with sporadically. And, you know, with the guys that I deployed with, I mean, it's every time we do one of these, it's like we never took a break. You know, we pick right back up. It, there's, there's no awkwardness. It's just like it's like family. I get it. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, I tell you so what, as Brent. we come to a close with this thing, yeah. we, we'd be remiss not to mention that Brent is uh, the co-host of his own podcast. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, so, Brent, the can you tell us a little bit saloon. about the, 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 the Pig Pen Saloon? So, it's a little bit different than uh, what my brothers right here are trying to accomplish. So, with the Pig Pen Saloon, um, we are... All right, so we started out doing just instagram live and it Mm -hmm. was kind of just all over the place man but um it's more of a place where if you're going through shit hit us up 
I know you probably don't know us, but just talk to us. We're trying to really cut down on the uh, veteran suicide, you know, pandemic that we have going right now within the services. But it's also funny stories, good laughs. It's a good time. Y'all should definitely check it out. We have, I think, like 13, 14 episodes mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And um, they've been helping us out with the uh, the, with the Zooms. So we can start doing that, interviewing. Like, we want to interview Josh. You know, stuff like that and get that ball going. Yeah, man. That sounds good. Cool. Well, as a as a podcaster, we're going to give you the opportunity to ask Luke and I a question. <laughs> so uh, go for it, man. Luke, oh, for, ask like Luke it. a question first. I got to ask Luke a question first. Mm-hmm. Let's see, man. So you're not that far away, man. When are we going to get together? Hell yeah, man. Well, so it's summer sometime, man. We'll cover us out. I tell you what we need to do is, is uh, I'll come down there and we'll do a live stream down there. That's what dude, we that should do. be fun. Yeah. You you ride motorcycles, huh? You got a motorcycle or anything? No, man. I mean, I kind of can, but I also can't. I'm not very proficient on one. Like I, you know, I can get <laughs> down the road, but I'm not, I, I don't say, trust dude, myself to drive in traffic. Basically, dude, ride down. We'll do a live cast and go hit the town, man. That sounds there good, go. man. Yeah, I think that's what that's what we'll do for sure. I, I got it. I got a question. It's gonna be for both y'all. Right. Why do y'all hate Georgia so much, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I get it. It's it's the the basics up and all that, and then Fort uh, Stewart I definitely think sucks. Because I think Georgia is one of those places that you have to be from there to love it. It's true. That makes sense when you know you got this one girl and she's like, "Oh, look at my kid," but you're like, "God damn, that kid's ugly as shit." <laughs> the moms don't love it, but they don't see how ugly that it is. That is a perfect analogy. <laughs> so that Georgia is. is my ugly child. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that makes sense man yeah i, I think the, i think it's two prong for me one is that i grew up in the south and i've driven through georgia hundreds of times and i can say that georgia drivers are the worst drivers i've ever come across <laughs> in the southeastern united states right in the southeastern united states i've come across worse since then nah dude seattle <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Washington drivers beat them, hundred percent. Washington drivers are worse, but it's a different kind of bad. Right? Like Georgia drivers are fucking reckless. Seattle drivers are just timid. They're scared. Like the speed limit is like a ticking time bomb. You go one mile over the speed limit on I five going through Seattle, your car will blow up. Yep, guaranteed. <laughs> but Georgia drivers are a different breed. So that's where it started. Except um, the people in Dalton. <laughs> so and, and it is worth mentioning that there's like there's there's basically two Georgias, you know. There's like everything. It basically, if you've got mountains in Georgia, you're basically just like Southern Tennessee. Yeah. And much. everything south of there is basically Northern Florida. Yeah. Or East. So it's just like <laughs> everything like Atlanta <laughs> South is just like the armpit of the United States. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll say it on record. Central Georgia is awful, man. Yes. Because there's nothing like. Nothing. There, there's like a piggly wiggly, a good bit of racism, and that's it, dude. Like, <laughs> it is awful, dude. It's like the armpit of America. Like, yeah. Oh man. And you have to drive through that, no matter what. Yeah, you do. to go anywhere. To, to go, go anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. So if you're going, if you're going to Tallahassee, gotta drive through it. Savannah, gotta drive through it. Atlanta, gotta drive through it. Mm-hmm. You cannot avoid it. And they may, maybe that's why we hate it. Is that. Because other states are bad. Like, come on, Mississippi, you can't hide. Like, that's the whole state. Like, and Alabama, outside of like Huntsville and maybe a little bit of Birmingham mm-hmm. and like the Gulf Shore, that's you too, Alabama. But you can avoid that because no one has to drive through Alabama. It's true. You have to drive through Georgia to go to Florida. So, like, but Florida sucks too. Florida sucks too. Though. Yeah, Florida's terrible. People still go there. Sorry. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I can't we're we're sorry going to Destin. Sorry, Brown. Uh, two, three weeks. I'm excited. Destin's awesome though, man. Destin is awesome. Yeah. I don't think I've ever the been Gulf Coast is really nice. I, I like the Gulf Coast. Mm-hmm. Like I the like Panhandle. Florida. Even like Tallahassee, Florida is not bad. It's it's kind of the same thing. Like there's two Floridas. There's like North Florida, mm-hmm. which is its own kind of weird, you know, Jacksonville vibes or whatever. And oh, then you have like that's the, that uh what is it? The dude with the tiger. Um oh, oh, Tiger gosh. King. Tiger King. That's the yeah. Tiger King stomp grams, dude. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Then you have like 
the dairy farms of Florida, and then you get to South Florida, which is a completely it's different a country. Yeah. Well, That's it's not even that. It's a it's a different continent. It's Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. hey, I'm cool with it, dude. Y'all sandwiches are fire. A little less mustard, but they're still fucking good. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and also to to wrap up why we hate Georgia, I think it's just because Third ID is such a dumpster fire. Yeah. Third ID, Fort Stewart, and, Swamps, Hinesville. And it has, tar- it has tarnished and like Hinesville. You- Hinesville, Georgia is a great reason to hate the state of Georgia. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you remember, uh, dude, I can't remember uh, roads or names. Like, I tried to dump everything from Stewart. Like, yep. everything I had saved. When I went to go do my goodbye speech, man, my first sergeant was talking about, like, Younger soldiers listen to what he has to say and shit. And then uh, my CO said some stuff. They gave me my award, and they're like, "All right, go ahead, say a speech." I already forgot my first aunt's. Na- no, I remember my first aunt's name, mm-hmm. but I forgot my uh, CO's name. So I was like, "All right, first aunt, <laughs> you know, stuff like thanks, dog." I was like, "Hey, man, for listen to your NCO, especially if you go like my big things IEDs." I was like, "Don't think that that shit's in the past, man." That shit will ruin your life. Focus. And then I was like, thanks, sir. And I just walked off. And my platoon sergeant pulled me to the side. He's like, hey, bud, next time, just try to remember the people that are giving you awards. Like, remember their names. And I was like, <laughs> I, was like dude, I hate this place, man. You're like, next time, I'm on terminal leave, bitch. <laughs> no, dude, that's what I did. I there like, is no next time. <laughs> See you later, big dog. Well, I meant like... 15 really cool dudes yeah, like mm-hmm. dudes i still talk to and i tell them i'm like y'all should have re-enlisted man saw something besides third id yeah mm-hmm. go to second id man second id is where it's at <laughs> third id has a habit of keeping people there their entire careers it does i was there four and a half years and i spent mm-hmm. the entire time in one platoon didn't even change yep. the platoons which i mean i'm glad for it but yeah yeah it's, it's uh, I've never seen that anywhere else. Everywhere else, like you're on a pretty strict two to three years. You're in and you're out. At third ID for some reason. I don't know if it's because they just can't get anybody to come there, so they might as well just try <laughs> yeah. to keep people to stay. It's like the only people uh, that reenlist to come to Fort Stewart are people that are from a striking Georgia. distance of Fort Stewart, like like you, Brent. You know, like you're you're from Georgia or you're from North Florida or whatever. Like there's oh, a lot of people that mo- voluntarily come. There. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. I was like, it ain't that bad, dude. It was that bad. Yeah, man. Third ID is a dumpster fire in the end. It's a dumpster fire in the swamp. On top of everything mm-hmm. else. It's not even a dumpster fire somewhere cool. You know? Like Fort Carson. Then you Carson, get the privilege of driving 45 show. minutes down a green tunnel to Savannah just to have a good time. Yeah. Got to drive an hour and a half just to go get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our answer it took us a long time to yeah, get there that's like why we hate Georgia answer to why Georgia sucks I felt yep. so bad when I first was doing a podcast with y'all man I was like dude I really just want to rape you know Fort Stewart but <laughs> they're going to feel the same way about Fort Stewart I do about you know Fort Lewis no and y'all are like no dude <laughs> fuck that dude that place is awful <laughs> Well, it's like I said, we have we have a really strong sense of belonging to our company, mm-hmm. which doesn't even exist anymore. Um, so you know, we were the the last hurrah bayonet company as an infantry company, mm. but like I could care less about the battalion. Yeah. Sorry, one six four, and I could care less about third ID. Sorry, General Abrams, please still come on. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't even remember what fucking battalion. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> I, 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 I don't even remember what battalion. I remember it was a cotton baler. So I was like, that's hey, two seven. That's two seven. Is that two seven? I was like, two hey, seven yeah. infantry. Which two yep. seven infantry I think has a pretty deep history. They do. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good unit. Oh yeah. So that was uh, that was another thing that shocked me was to be completely fair to our company, and actually I have to say for one six four as a whole, when I was there the whole time I was like, this unit is messed up. This is a terrible unit. Like, nothing is run right. I was like, the rest of the army's got to be better than this. <laughs> I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they were actually a really squared away unit, which was terrifying. 
Yeah. Because when you got to other units, you're like, this this isn't better. Mm. That's no terrifying. <laughs> yeah. It, and that's what the big, like, you have people like, oh, you've only been in one unit. It's like, hey, I like it. Well, go see the world. What if I don't like it? I like where <laughs> I'm at right now. Yeah, the grass the grass isn't necessarily greener. It's just a different shade of green. Yeah, and it's covered in shit. And the sergeant major says, don't step in it. Like, <laughs> there needs to be a program where you can talk to a person from that unit and be like, what's up, man? What do you think? They, you know, they do. They have that. It's just yeah, that no one uses it. You know, these missing people from Fort Hood, they be like... Don't fucking come here. You will die. Like, how does that still happen? Yeah. We should have well, went Navy, dudes. <laughs> no. <laughs> we should have went whoa, Air whoa. Force. Air Force. Air, Air Force. Force. Yeah. Air Force. All right. Well, we'll usually close this thing out by kind of giving you the floor to speak your piece. So if there's anything we didn't cover that you kind of wanted to talk about or whatnot, the, the floor is yours, man. I'm so sorry I'm chewing ice. That's so inappropriate. Oh. You're good. I'll just cut it out. Thanks, bro. So, can y'all add like the things? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, when you do it, like Pig Pen Saloon. Could y'all when y'all do the editing? What do you mean? Like the link? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, dude, just throw that in there. Um, me and my buddy brother, we're uh, not on this level yet, but we're just trying, man, just trying to do an outreach. You know, if somebody's struggling, let us know. It's Pig Pen Saloon on uh, Instagram, and um, and do you we, have your YouTube page set up yet? We do. Perfect. What's the? And well, you you can text it to yeah, me. Yeah, I'll, I'll text that. The, yeah, I'll be able yeah. to get all that for you. I'll Perfect. get that from him. Yeah, we'll make uh, sure it's on there. But yeah, we're, we're trying right now. Uh, we're really focused on doing the uh, Zoom platform, so we can have multiple people at one time. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's going to be a good time. Moving forward from here. Good, man. Awesome. Yeah. And if anybody's in uh, North Georgia that sees this, man, let me know, man. We'll go. <laughs> I don't drink right now, but we can go and like ride motorcycles or talk or <laughs> have some water. Sweet. There things. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, Brent, we appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate it, boys. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Awesome. All right, buddy. man. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Pandre Podcast. If you liked what you heard, Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. New episodes every Monday on all major podcast platforms, Facebook, and YouTube. Visit www.thepandwaypodcast.com for more information.